Welcome everyone! Today is day 14 of the 20-day flower creation journey. My name is Luisa and this is the Lulu Blue Studio. Today we are going to paint these lilac flowers from the flower color guidebook. And as you can see, these are very tiny little flowers bunched together and overall this plant has a purple color. So in order to create this lilac flower, we are going to use a different approach. We are going to use a round brush. I'm going to mix on my color palette a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue. I'm using a little bit of cobalt blue and magenta. And I'm going to use a round brush with a fine tip to start to create at the bottom of the page all of these fine, fine little points. The main idea and the way I approach this composition is to create the illusion that there are many, many flowers that are bunched together using the wet in wet technique and using very different color values and the color use of the shade of purple to create this overall plant spread across all of the page that I have in front of me. So I take this round brush in size 12, a little bit of pigment and using different pressures onto the page, I start to add on the page the first layer of pigment. As you can see, sometimes I'm just using the very fine tip of this brush or sometimes I'm using the belly in order to add the first layer of purple of these flowers. So the first layer is going to be just a very light impression where to add these flowers. But then I keep adding on top of, of the first layer additional brush strokes using the tip of the brush and the belly of the brush of more concentrated purple. This color is obtained mainly by mixing a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of magenta, but using different percentages of these two colors, I will obtain different colors overall, color use, that will allow me to create a very nice lilac spread all over the page. So I keep thinking of creating layers. The first layer is this very light value color of purple and using the tip of my brush I keep adding a second layer of more concentrated magenta or more concentrated uh, cobalt blue. We keep adding dimension to this plant, adding more and more layers one on top of the other. In order to do this in the best way possible, we need to remember to change the color hue of what we have on the brush by removing part of the pigment in the cup of water or adding a few brush strokes of different color overall. Adding the second layer of brush strokes while the first one is still wet will allow us to achieve a perfect wet in wet technique where the darker and more concentrated second layer is going to blend perfectly with the first layer of paint onto the paper. Here a tip that I want to give you. You can either mix onto your color palette different color use of for example magenta and cobalt blue or you can also try to add directly onto the paper a more concentrated, for example, magenta and then adding onto this magenta while this is still wet on top a few brush strokes of cobalt blue. In this way, the cobalt blue and the magenta will actually blend onto paper and not onto the color palette and the effect is going to be slightly different as you will notice especially when this painting is going to be when completely dry. So overall I think this composition, this sort of painting, will allow you to exercise this sort of brush strokes that are pretty different from all the other ones we have tried and tested during the previous days on this flower color journey 
and also will give you a better understanding of how the wet in wet technique works when you lay onto the paper different layers of paint one on top of the other when these uh, layers are not completely dry. So at this point I keep building the first layer in the upper part of the page and I keep adding a little bit of more concentrated magenta, pure magenta, with the tip of the brush and this magenta will easily blend with the layers underneath of paint that I've created just a few minutes ago. I love to see how the magenta blends with the layers underneath but I also like in this moment when the magenta is still wet to add very closely some cobalt blue and in this way the cobalt blue, the pure cobalt blue, will blend through the wet in wet technique with the magenta and at the end we will achieve a very beautiful effect. I encourage you to test these brush strokes and this color mixture. This is a very fun flower to paint because there are no errors to be made. So enjoy the process and try to experiment as much as you can. And I am sure you will find your way and optimize your technique. So your lilac plant is going to be beautiful by the end of this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm mainly building this lilac plant on two layers. But if you have more time at your disposal, you can also keep creating layers one on top of the others, adding these brush strokes one on top of the other. So you can really experiment and you can keep adding layers and dimension to these flowers until you think you have reached the optimal final result. By using the belly of the brush or just the tip of the brush, remember you can achieve different brush strokes and for example you can even just create the very first layer using mainly the belly of your brush and then adding the finition with a more concentrated pigment just using the tip of your brush. For example, at this point I am using just the tip of the brush to add a few accent brush strokes, a few accent flowers that are located in the upper part of this plant. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the overall shape of the lilac plant so far and therefore I can start to create the stems and the leaves. The stems are more like branches, so they are in brown color. I use a little bit of burnt amber with a little bit of subgreen and with this light mixture I start to create with the very thin tip of the brush, these branches. I look at the reference picture on my left side to understand where to add these branches and to give a more natural effect. I have recreated this lilac in a quite similar way to the reference picture. Therefore, also in this case, I'm adding the third branch as well, because I see from the reference picture actually three branches are the main components of this composition. And then I rinse off my round brush and I use my beloved mob brush to start to create the leaves. 
If you have followed other tutorials up until now, you know that I love to use the mop brush to create a very loose style leaves. And this is the reason why I am using the same brush also for this lilac composition. I use the belly of the brush and sometimes just the tip. The tip when I wanted to create a very fine leaf or even just a leaf that is not very defined. And I use instead the belly of the mop brush when I want to create a leaf that is bigger in size. I usually drag my mop brush and uh, I create these small leaves that are very, very loose. And then I add on top of the first layer of leaf some darker green. In this case, it's a mixture of subgreen with a little bit of ultramarine violet. And I started to create some more concentrated leaves all over the page. And I also allow the same color to blend into the first layer of leaves I created in first place. To create these leaves, I am looking at the reference picture, but at a certain point, I'm just enjoying the process and adding leaves where I think they should be placed. In order to create a different use of this green, I am adding to the subgreen sometimes a little bit of cobalt blue and sometimes a little bit of magenta because cobalt blue and magenta are the colors that we used to create the flowers. Therefore, adding a little bit of these colors to the green will close the gap, let's say, between the bright green and the purple flowers of this painting. Sometimes I change the color value of these leaves, also adding maybe a little bit of yellow, and in this way I will create a type of green that is much brighter. And at this point I take back my round brush in size 12 and I mix again a little bit of cobalt blue and magenta. And with this color and the fine tip of this brush, I touch the first layer of the painting and I start to build the second layer. So my idea overall is that I don't need to build on the second layer all over the first one, but I can create a few spots that are much darker in color and where this purple is much more concentrated. I think in this way I'm going to create a lilac that is still in a loose style but a little bit more realistic where some areas are darker than others. Also the second layer of paint is laid sometimes using just the tip of the brush and sometimes instead the belly of the brush. The first layer where I'm adding now a little bit of magenta is not completely dry. Therefore, when I add the second layer, some of the painting is going to blend into the first layer. I really like this effect and this is what I'm looking for. But for example, if you want to have more defined flowers using these brush strokes, you can, for example, just wait for the first layer to be completely dry and add the second layer afterwards. Also for the second layer, you can allow different colors to blend directly onto paper. So you can add a little bit of magenta and then on top of the magenta you can add a little bit of cobalt blue or you can mix your colors on the color palette and then just add them onto the paper. It's up to you. And at this point we are reaching the end of this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed painting lilacs with me and I hope to see you tomorrow on day 15.